Welcome to the third and final part of my series on Chinese sci-fi. Uh, the last book I want to talk about is Invisible Planets, an anthology of Chinese sci-fi short stories by various authors, all translated by Ken Liu. Uh, he was the same guy who did Three Body. I have not finished this book yet. I've been skipping around. Uh, so far, I've read four of the stories. One of them, The Flower of Sha Zue, failed to make any impression on me whatsoever. It was set in Shenzhen, and it involved a sex worker, and that's pretty much all I remember. Then I moved on to the second author, Xia Jia's stories. One of them I liked, and two of them I loved. Uh, the first one, the one I liked, was a robot ghost story which was eerie and heartwarming. Then I really started to get into this book when I read Tong Tong Summer. I think it's a lot bolder to speculate three years into the future than it is to speculate 100 years into the future, since those who speculate three years into the future will be actually held accountable. Tong Tong's Summer is a story that does the former. In addition to being a sweet story about a girl and her grandpa, it portrays a very plausible future in which people use a service that's like Uber for robots. Basically, a household purchases a vaguely humanoid robot unit and then dictates a task to an app. That task is sent to various human operators on the other side of the app who choose to complete the task for a price. Like I said, it's a really charming story. I just wish I could be as optimistic as Shai is when it comes to this new Uber for Robots technologies. Uh, in the story, it allows the grandpa to do things he hasn't been able to do for a long time, like playing chess or, I don't know, going fishing or something like that. But I think in hyper-capitalist America, things would kind of suck. We'd be coming home from the job that gives us health insurance, only to strap ourselves into the robot controls to clean up after some rich people, just so we can make rent. The last story I read was Night Journey of the Dragon Horse, which I will read to you right now. Don't you recognize me? A thin voice asked. I'm not sure. I'm a bat. A bat? Half beast, half bird. I sleep during the day and emerge at night to swoop between dawn and dream. The dragon horse carefully examines his interlocutor. Sharp snout, large ears, a soft body covered by fine gray fur, and curled upon itself, and two thin, membranous wings shimmering in the moon. And who are you? The bat squeaks. Who am I? The dragon horse repeats the question. You don't know who you are? Maybe I do, maybe I don't, replies the dragon horse. I'm called Dragon Horse, meaning I am both dragon and horse. I began as a myth in China, but I was born in France. I don't know if I'm a machine or a beast, alive or dead, or perhaps I've never possessed the animating spark. I also don't know if my walk through the night is real or only a dream. Like all poets who make dreams their horses, the bat sighs. The dragon horse in the story is based on a real-life towering mechanical work of art created by French production company La Machine to celebrate the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations between China and France. Seeing this 50-foot behemoth on the street, your notions of what is possible would have to expand at least one iota to accommodate it. You might even want to write about it like Xia did. Night Journey of the Dragon Horse is a dreamlike tale that through the newly acquired consciousness of the horse connects us to several different times and places. The monster inhabited an ancient world, carnivalesque Paris, and post-apocalyptic China. I found it very Borgesian, of or related to the works of Jorge Luis Borges, which is another way of saying that I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a testament to how one creation can move others to create, and how, despite all the destruction we cause, our art will still make the case for humanity long after we're gone. And that's as far as I got in Invisible Planets. I will be keeping it by my bedside until I finish it. So to recap this whole Chinese science fiction series, the Three Body series, instant classic, up there with the likes of Snow Crash, Ringworld, you name it. 
I would recommend this to anyone, sci-fi fans, non-fans, anybody. The City Trilogy. Not quite like anything else, but not for everyone. I would recommend it to those who are interested in both science fiction and in Chinese history, philosophy, and literature. Or simply for those who want something different, really different. Something lighthearted, but at the same time epic, with weighty themes of religion, ethnic tension, colonialism, and dictatorship. Invisible Planets. Uh, so far, so good. So far, recommended for anyone looking for a good sci-fi anthology. I will definitely try to get my hands on whatever Xia Jia has in translation, and may even try reading her short fiction in Chinese. All right, well, that concludes this series. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.